June 14, 1998. Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls clinched the NBA championship for not only a third straight time, but for the sixth time in eight years. In the end, the 1997-98 campaign was a successful one for the Chicago Bulls, but it didn't come without a lot of bumps in the road. Let's go back a ways, way back before the ending of the 1998 season. Way before all the drama and the egos. Way before the dismantling of the Chicago Bulls. Jerry Krause, the Chicago Bulls general manager, who had been hired by the Bulls owner, Jerry Reinsdorf, in 1985, had helped build the Chicago Bulls into the force that it had become in the 1990s. Krause made great moves by drafting Horace Grant and trading for Scottie Pippen on the night of the 1987 NBA draft, but Krause hadn't won anyone over in the Bulls organization, especially not Chicago's star player Michael Jordan. The turmoil between Jordan and Krause started in 1986 at the end of the season. While rehabbing a broken foot, Jordan wanted to come back and try and help the Bulls make their way into the playoffs. Krause told Jordan that he shouldn't be playing and that he should just sit the remainder of the year. Jordan didn't listen and he went ahead and played anyway, later claiming that he thought Krause just wanted him to stay out so the Bulls could get a higher pick in the 1986 NBA draft. In the next few years while Jordan's star was rising, he and Bulls management had made an agreement that whatever trade they decided to make, they would consult with Jordan first about it. Well, in 1988, while Jordan was at a boxing match in New Jersey, the Bulls traded one of Jordan's closest friends, Charles Oakley. This trade was the straw that broke the camel's back. Jordan started bullying Krause relentlessly, even going off about Krause's weight. Jordan would be at the back going, Jerry Krause, Jerry Krause, this bus went a lot faster yesterday without your fat ass on it. In 1989, Phil Jackson was promoted from assistant coach to head coach of the Chicago Bulls after the firing of Doug Collins. Jackson changed the culture in Chicago and would coach the Jordan and Pippen-led Bulls to three straight titles from 1991 to 1993. Amid gambling rumors and the death of his father, Jordan retired after the 1993 NBA season. While he was gone, Pippen along with Croatian superstar Tony Kukoc led the New Look Bulls into the Eastern Conference semifinals. With Jordan gone, Pippen had his chance to become the leader of the team. But in the last seconds of Game 3 of the conference semis, Jackson drew a play up for Kukoc to shoot the final shot, and not Pippen. Pippen told Jackson he wasn't going out on the floor for the play, and after an exchange, went to the other end of the bench. Kukoc knocked down the shot to win the game, but the Bulls went on to lose the series in seven games. Pippen said he wanted out of Chicago. Trade rumors involving Pippen escalated during the 1994 offseason. Jerry Krause was reportedly looking to ship Pippen off to the Seattle Sonics in exchange for all-star forward Sean Kemp, moving Tony Kukoc into Pippen's position as starting small forward, with Kemp filling in the vacant starting power forward position in place of Horace Grant, a free agent who had just left the Bulls for the up-and-coming Orlando Magic during the offseason. Scottie Pippen absolutely despised management, one of those reasons being that they refused to rework a contract extension that he had signed back in 1991 that was worth $18 million over a span of five years. Pippen wanted his money and he wanted security, so against the wishes of both the owner and Krause, he went ahead and signed the deal. And Reinsdorf and Krause held him to that deal, which infuriated Pippen. In February, when asked by the late Craig Sager as to whether he thought he would be traded, Pippen said this. Well, I, I hope I am. Uh, you know, I think the way things are looking now, uh, uh, with the trading deadline closing in, there's a lot of talk going on from different teams. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of rumor and different speculation. So, you know, I'm just hoping that the right opportunity arises for the Bulls and for me. Everybody agrees you're underpaid. If your contract was changed, could you be happy in Chicago? Uh, I would I would have to say no at this point. You know, I, I think it's at the point now is where uh, I want to go and uh, play somewhere else. I, I think the franchise and the team has changed since I've been there, and uh, I think it's a time for a change for me. Pippen would remain a bull, and those rumors were put to rest once it was announced that Michael Jordan would be returning from his baseball stint to the Bulls late in the 1994-95 season. Kraus was making enemies left and right. Not only was he on the bad side of the Bulls' two superstars, he was also butting heads with head coach Phil Jackson. Jackson had used the team's hatred at Kraus as fuel for winning basketball games. Jackson also felt like he should be allowed to have more say in personnel decisions when it came to the team. Kraus felt differently. And now here we are. The Bulls, coming off a second straight title in 1997, looking to win another title in their second three-peat in eight years. 
In the summer leading into the 1997-98 season, Jerry Krause had a wedding party for his daughter. He didn't invite Phil Jackson. Instead, Krause invited Iowa State head basketball coach Tim Floyd, the guy that everyone had basically shooed in as Jackson's replacement. Later that week, Jackson marched into Krause's office, and they both agreed that the 1997-98 season would be Phil's last coaching the Chicago Bulls. On press day before the season started, Krause told the media that he didn't care if the Bulls went 82-0. Phil Jackson wasn't coming back as the Bulls head coach. He then went on to say that players don't win championships, organizations do. Krause claims he was misquoted. Michael Jordan would announce during the season that if Phil Jackson wasn't brought back as the coach for the 1998 season, that he wouldn't be playing for the Chicago Bulls. Jackson had already made up his mind, though. He wasn't coming back. And he decided that this season would be titled, The Last Dance. Heading into the Eastern Conference playoffs, rumors again began swirling about Krause and Iowa State coach Tim Floyd having meetings to talk about Floyd coaching the Bulls after the 1998 season had concluded. Michael Jordan told reporters off the record that no matter how much management denied it, they were the ones who were breaking up the Bulls. The Bulls would go on to beat the Utah Jazz in the 1998 NBA Finals on a game-winning shot by Michael Jordan. Jordan and Jackson embraced after the game. Jackson and Jordan, perhaps for the last time. After the season concluded, owner Reinsdorf still offered Phil his job and told him he could bring back whoever he wanted. Phil declined the offer and hopped on his motorcycle and took off towards the sunset. Michael Jordan was absolutely stunned. Jackson told Jordan that he should make his decision on whether to come back to the Bulls on his own. Jordan let Jackson know that Jackson leaving would have a big impact on what he decided to do. With the 1998-99 season being shortened due to a lockout, Jerry Reinsdorf left the door open for everyone to come back. Reinsdorf announced before a decision was made that if Jackson didn't return, Iowa State's Tim Floyd would be his successor as the Bulls head coach. Michael Jordan held tight to the idea that the Bulls and Jackson would work something out, but it never happened. Jordan's friend Ahmad Rashad said that Jordan wanted to come back and play one more year. But when he finally realized that Phil wasn't coming back, Rashad said that it was the worst day of Jordan's career. Michael Jordan retired on January 4th, 1999, and in the two weeks after, Jerry Reinsdorf and Jerry Krause dismantled the Chicago Bulls. Scottie Pippen finally got the big contract he wanted and was re-signed and then traded to the Houston Rockets. Luke Longley and Steve Kerr were traded, and Dennis Rodman joined the Lakers after being released. It seems as though Krause and Reinsdorf wanted to show the world that they could win a championship without Michael Jordan. Jerry Krause felt like he hadn't gotten the credit he deserved. Once training camp started for the lockout shortened season, the Bulls had only four players on their roster. So in the end, who really broke up the Bulls? I don't think there's one singular reason. Jerry Krause gets a lot of the blame, but I feel like Phil Jackson should get some blame as well. But at the end of the day, all that's really known is what has been reported by the media and stories that have been told by those involved. But what if? What if Jerry Krause and Phil Jackson had gotten along? What if everyone came back for one more season? What if the last dance wasn't really the last dance? Could Jordan's Bulls make it out of the East one more time and beat the David Robinson and Tim Duncan-led San Antonio Spurs? Let's find out. Let's see if the Bulls could have won four straight titles.